Hi guys. Well, I had to get out of the shop for a while. It's a little windy. I don't know how this is going to work as far as sound, but we're going to give her a whirl. Uh, this will be the first ball down the barrel of this rifle. I built this. Uh, it's a uh, early style Hawken. It's a flinter. This here, it's got the early style um, trigger guard, early style cheek piece. It's full stock. This one has a collar and barrel, uh, which would be a 56 twist, round bottom uh, barrel rifling. So I've got a paper target there. We're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a go and uh, adjust it up a little and and see how she performs. Um, a tactic, okay, that I use when I'm uh, this would be a good one when you're shooting from the pouch on the range. I shoot 3F for everything. I sight my guns in, I uh, figure out my loads, work up my loads with 3F powder. Uh, the reason why I like to do this is because on these flinters, I just take the 3F out of the uh, horn and put it in. So that keeps me from having to have a separate a separate um, little priming horn and you could do it with 2F too I just like 3F it flows a little better um, sometimes when I'm hunting and I'm using the uh, little preloaded tubes I might carry a primer in my pocket if I'm hunting with a flinter a little primer but it has 3F powder in it so let's give this a try see how she shoots <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you go, embarrassing moment. And so we try it again. And again. And again. All right, finally. Uh, that's why you take them out and you shoot them get stuff going. Uh, it looks to me like the ball went a little high. Center wise, eh, she's not so bad. So now that we got the right flint in there and we got things going, let's uh, let's shoot this a little bit. Okay, well as you saw we had just a little bit of problem with our flint and I uh, napped that a little bit and one of the things I do, another tactic, I guess, that I do, a lot of times folks, most of the time folks will bed their flint in, uh, in leather, a little piece of leather, and, and that's cool. I did that for years. Lately, what I've been doing is I bed it, I get a little bit of lead, and I pound it out wafer thin, and I bed it. I wrap the lead around there, then I squash the uh, jaws together on the lead. And I find that holds it a little bit better. So 
when you when you first start shooting these flint locks, you got to figure out what works the best. I think I got this flint figured now. I got a piece that's snapped down the right width, and it's a it sits back enough in the jaw that it doesn't move. So let's do some more shooting. Okay. I adjusted it a little to the right because it needed that, and uh, I put it one step down. So that should uh, we're shooting sixty grains, three F. 530 round ball, 25 yards, um, 010 patch. Oh yeah, yeah that put it just about right. Okay, so my first shot was right up here. Uh, there's some other holes here from pistol shooting. First shot was here, so I moved it over and down, and uh, I got it right here now. Um, this is the first step up. When I go to 100 yards, I may uh, go to the first step and see how that works. Anyway, if I shoot from this side, down the side of the shop at the steel, um, I'm kind of out of the wind, so you probably won't hear too much wind in the camera. So let's see if I can shoot a few more shots. Okay. Let's try a shot at some steel. Hmm. I don't know if I got it or not. You, you kind of get a, uh, a rhythm when you're doing this. Uh, before I shoot each time, I take one wipe of the frizzing with my thumb and one wipe of the stone, the flint with my thumb. Gets that little bit of film off of there from the last shot. And you, with these guns, you get into a little habit, a little ritual that you do each time you shoot, and it helps it go off every time. So now that I said that, watch it not go off. Oh, that was pretty quick. It went off that time, it hit the ball. Uh, it looks like it's kind of close to center, a little low and low at center. Um, offhand shooting with a flint lock, but uh, it was quite fast. The other thing you want to remember, the first couple of shots when I put the powder in here, I think I put a little too much powder. Um, this last time I was really shy with the powder, very little. The less powder you put in there, the more of a flash that it'll throw through the flash. It's why it's called a flash hole. So that's more flash that it'll throw through there. Um, when you put too much powder, especially if you go over the flash hole, it has to burn down like a fuse, and that will slow the uh, lock time up. Well, I'm going to keep shooting as long as this weather don't start raining on me, and uh, I'd like to shoot about five shots through here, five more shots through here, so stick around. I love these guns. This one here was just a plain grade stock, and uh, sometimes you really get lucky when you get this. Is just a plain old. This would be a working man's rifle back in the day. It would have went into the mountains with the trappers. Uh, nothing fancy, but as you can see. Even though it was nothing fancy, it still has a little bit of curl in it, and it has some pretty spots. It's turned out really nice. I, I'm going to enjoy this rifle. Load her up. 
Anyway, I was paying too much for my shooting and not to my battery, so I gotta do this again. I have to close out again. So let's give her a try. Bet I'll miss it this time. Well, I guess I would've lost that bet. Man, I'm really getting happy with this rifle. You can see these flinters. You spend a little time getting them all tuned up, follow a few simple rules. They're fast, they shoot good. This one's really turning into an accurate shooter. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is adjust the trigger just a little bit, but uh, this, I'm really happy with this rifle. So anyway, thanks for joining us, and uh, I hope you enjoy your time with us. I sure have a good time. Anyway, I'm Dave Morelli, and I'll see you next time. Keep shooting. Bye-bye.